let's just go down this hypothesis that linoleic acid, meaning our toxic inflammatory seed oils, just for everybody listening, is damaging the microbes, then I have heard, I mean, when we look at things like eat fiber before a high carbohydrate meal, I'm wondering if, yes, it slows down the absorption of blood sugar, but maybe you're also feeding these microbes. And so you're also not hungry. You're killing the hunger quicker. So Mm -hmm. which makes me wonder, like, well, maybe we should just be eating some leafy greens with everything. And that could really start to bring back the health of those microbes. Yeah, yeah, no, right. I am a big advocate of fiber in the context of carbohydrates. So I'm not a I'm not a kind of universal advocate where, like, for example, if someone finds that a pure carnivore diet has reversed their crushing autoimmune disease, and I'd mm. say, you keep going. Yeah. Don't stop. You're doing yeah. great. But the more a person eats carbs, then the more important, I believe, fiber becomes. So, yeah, for all the reasons you mentioned in that there are it, it has a direct effect at altering and, and kind of blunting the glycemic and insulinogenic effect or response to foods. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is a direct food for beneficial bacteria. And the product of its metabolism is beneficial, namely short chain fatty acids that our human diet, because we don't eat a lot of fermented foods, we don't get mm-hmm. a lot of short chain fats anymore like we like we used to, you know, where we would have a a carbohydrate or dairy and we would ferment it very often we don't especially in the west we have left fermentation behind entirely yeah and even even what we do eat as fermented it's often been so processed that we might not be getting the products of the fermentation namely the short chain fats so short chain fatty acids are not only a fuel for a, a different sort of microbiome but they also get absorbed and have tremendous metabolic advantages like stimulating mitochondrial biogenesis, Mm -hmm. improving insulin sensitivity, stimulating glucose uptake in muscle cells, thereby helping glycemia. So Mm -hmm. yeah, short chain fats are really beneficial. And while we don't metabolize the fiber, various bacteria in our microbiome do. And the product of that metabolism is short chain fats, which we need. Yes. Or we want. So when we look at the carbohydrate, I love the way you said that, that there's really only one macronutrient that gets us in trouble, because that, I think, is a beautiful way to look at it. I really have seen in just coaching so many women, the dysfunctional relationship women specifically have with food. And if we can bring it down to one macronutrient, that makes it a lot easier. But carbs are getting a really bad rap. Women specifically are getting very confused because some people are saying go keto, no carbs. Other people are saying you need carbs to make serotonin, you need carbs to make hormones. So can we unpack the carb? Like, I feel like just like fat was like we finally figured out there's good fat and there's bad fat. I feel like in carbohydrates, we need to have that same carbohydrate, that same that same conversation. Are there good carbs and bad carbs? And maybe that one macronutrient, we just need to take the bad carbs out, but still keep in those good carbs. And what are they? Yeah. 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 So just I I have to I have to be careful here because I don't want to (laughs) answer the question in a way that that suggests a kind of false sense of authority here. Because the thing I hate the most in academia Mm. is people who have an actual area of expertise and pretend they know about everything. And I don't want to make that claim. What can I claim? So in humans, just to sort of make, have a common understanding here, humans are capable of living and even thriving in in the total absence of of carbohydrates. So that is possible. Humans can thrive and reproduce and live on a purely carnivore diet, but we are omnivores. So, and so we clearly are adapted and Mm evolved or created in order to eat and consume these. And we've been doing them since time immemorial. Now, I so I very much appreciate that while I point the finger at carbs, I I actually don't want someone to think, okay, well, then Ben's solution to everything is just cut carbs. It actually isn't. It's a little more nuanced. And I think that different people have different needs. But like, for example, I know someone personally who had absolutely debilitating ulcerative colitis, like resulting in them having for years like a failure to develop stunted height and just crushing health problems 
they went on a carnivore diet and have gotten off all medications and yeah. have never felt better. It is miraculous. I've seen that I too, tell by that, the way. I've, to, I've seen yeah, miracles yeah, so, on the carnivore diet yeah, too. Yeah, it, it is incredible. Now, however, there are a lot of people who could eat plenty of carbs so and be perfectly well with them. Now, my version of good carbs and bad carbs, it isn't as clear cut as I wish it could be, which is just the easiest version. If we go kind of first layer down, it would be just don't get your carbs from bags and boxes with barcodes. Whole mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables, eat them. That would kind of be the first layer down. And, and for the vast majority of people, that would work and it would be perfect. Mm -hmm. That eat whole fruits and vegetables liberally. Enjoy them. You don't have to count them. Don't worry about it. If it's fruits and vegetables, eat them. And then make sure you're getting lots of good protein and fat all at, at the same time. Now, however, there could be a kind of another level down. Like, let's say I'm talking to a person with type 2 diabetes. If I give them carte blanche with fruits and vegetables, they're going to be eating bananas and apples and the most sugary fruits yeah. that are spiking their blood sugar levels. And so in that person, I would say you actually focus more, more on the cruciferous vegetables. Eat as much as you want of these cruciferous vegetables you know, broccoli, cauliflower, the ones that if you put on a plate in front of like an infant, they're going to, or a toddler, they're going to push it away, you know, but that would work. But at the same time, those vegetables may be the worst thing for someone with an autoimmune disease to eat. And they right. maybe would be better if, if they were going through some elimination, they may be better with fruits, which generally have far fewer anti-nutrients like phytates and oxalates so they may be more sensitive to those things. And so I actually think there's kind of a quirky division where it, it kind of depends on how many layers we have to go down. And then it starts to branch off into different people's health needs mm. where the person with insulin resistance di and diabetes, they're avoiding these fruits. And yet those may be the fruits that a person with an autoimmune disease can actually enjoy because they have fewer extra stuff in them that go beyond the nutrients you know, like the, the more of the anti-nutrients. So, yeah, yeah it, it, unfortunately, at the, I, I'm, I wish I could give a simple answer, but that's the best I can come up with, that there's no kind of good carb, bad carb. I think it really does depend on the person. Yeah, it's, I, I actually really love the way you, you describe that because my new cry is stop building your health habits around a 90 second rail. Like mm. people are getting yeah. like they're fighting with each other on social media about low carb, high carb, no carb, you know, and it, it's personalized is what I just heard right there.